all right let's talk about computer programming diploma and diploma in particular because that's the course that i am doing otherwise there is also a degree that you can do which is bachelor's in computer science but i don't have enough much insight on that one so i'm not going to talk about it but i do know a lot about the computer programming diploma as i've almost completed it i'm in the last semester and there's just a month to go so i've already made a few videos about it previously but i feel like they were lacking some information and thus i'm making this video in which i'll cover all the details that i have missed in those videos and also they were in hindi which a lot of you weren't able to understand so now this video is going to be in english which a broader range of audience will be able to understand understand all right that being said let's start the video and first of all let's talk about the eligibility criteria because that is something that creates a lot of confusion in a lot of you people and well also i was confused about it also so i used to think that it is mandatory to have 60% in maths and 60% in english in order to get admission into this course but uh, that is not the case in some colleges i have seen people get admission even though they don't have 60% in maths i have seen people get like admission even though they have like 40 45 in maths so it depends on the college i would say but if you want to know like what is exactly the eligibility criteria for the college that you are applying then i would just suggest you that you do a simple google search and look into the eligibility criteria of your college because every college has a course page in which they describe everything about the course so i think you should uh, google it and search about it that will be the best when it comes to knowing the eligibility criteria for your college in computer programming All right that was it for the eligibility criteria let's now talk about the technical requirements for your course and well even though i have talked about it in my previous videos but i have missed few key details that you need to know and well for me also i came to know those details when i came in my semester 4 so let's start off with the basics so most colleges recommend you that you have a laptop with a processor with the power of i5 like intel i5 or equivalent and also you have minimum 8 gigabytes of ram or 16 if you can and then after that they require you to have 512 gigabytes of storage or more and for me i bought a laptop which was i5 8 gigabytes of ram and 512 gigabytes of storage and for me it has worked out to be just fine but uh, there were some cases when it was lagging a little bit but other than that there was no issues so that is a thing but uh, when i came in the semester 4 there was a course called ios mobile development using swift and by the name you get it right it's ios development and for that you need a software which is xcode and that software only runs on the macbooks and well i bought a windows laptop so xcode does not run on my computer even though the colleges have imac computers over there in the libraries and in the computer labs but if you choose to do the assignments from your home then you won't be able to right so in that case i had to buy a software called mac in cloud which lets you have a virtual macbook in your windows pc and for that i had to pay 40 dollars so there is also a part of technical requirements but for me i had this course and thus i had to do this maybe if you are choosing a different college then you might not have this but it all boils down to the computer that you would need to choose and i would go with a windows anytime and for the windows i5 would be enough 8 gb ram will be enough and 512 gigabytes of storage is more than enough well this begs the question which laptop should you get because there are tons and tons of laptops even with the i5 processor So I'll leave the links for the few of the best i5 laptops that you can buy and I'll leave the links for the laptops that you can buy from India and also from Canada so you can go ahead and click the links down below and see which one suits you best and if you consider to buy one then I would suggest you you do that with the link in the description as it would help the channel and I would really appreciate that So far we have talked about the eligibility criteria and the technical requirements for the course and now let's talk about the timetable which is pretty confusing for a lot of people and I'll make a specific video on which kind of timetable that you should choose for maximum productivity because you have to do a job and 
you have to study so i'll make a specific video in which i'll talk about the best timetable that you can opt for and that will make your life so much easier but for now let's talk about how it is so there are a few timetables that you can choose from and depending upon the timetable that you choose you might have to go to the college three days a week or four days a week or even in some cases five days a week right so there are few timetables generally three to four that you can choose from uh, when the registration starts and i'll suggest that if you are going to register then be there on time uh, like open the website and just be ready because there are lots and lots of people waiting for the registration to open and then they just choose the best timetable that they feel like even though like uh, i don't think that matters most because after you have selected the timetable there is a time period which is called add and drop in which you can choose specific courses for a specific time period to meet your personal needs so i'll talk about how you should opt for classes when it comes to add and drop so stay tuned for that i'll drop a video for the timetables so that is everything about the timetable let's now talk about the syllabus so syllabus is something that would differ from college to college but there's a general pattern which is followed like in most of the colleges so let's talk about that one so the grading criteria is broken down into few key things and that includes the assignments labs projects and exams so in some cases there might be a uh, marking criteria where there is assignments for 50% and then there are two exams of 25-25. But there are some different uh, professors who choose different marking criteria like some would choose like 20% for your labs, 30 for assignments, 20 for a project and 30 for exam. So this is all it like it would just be a mix of labs, assignments and exams. That's everything about the syllabus. Let's now talk about the programming languages that are taught in this course. And again, depending upon the college, the programming languages that are taught might be different. But for me, let's talk about the languages that I got to learn in my college. And starting off, it was HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Java, then C Sharp and also some few other languages like the mainframe programming language or the Arduino programming language. So the main languages are HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Java and then also there is C Sharp. But apart from that, there are some few other supplementary programming languages like Arduino or even a mainframe programming language. But if you want to know what programming languages are exactly taught in your course, then I would suggest you that you do a simple Google search in that you should type computer programming course outline and then your college name. So let's say if your college is Seneca College, then you should type in computer programming course outline Seneca College. And when you click the link for that, you will see the whole breakdown of your course in which you will be able to see which programming languages are taught in which semester and also how many subjects are there in each semester so you will get a clear idea of what is there in your course and what is there in each semester of the course so outlines are very helpful and i would highly recommend that you guys look for your course outline and read it understand it how everything works so far we have covered a lot of things and if you are still here i would request you to leave a like down below for the video because it will help the video to reach maximum amount of people and it would help them also so please leave a like down below and let's now talk about the difficulty level so if there was a scale for rating the difficulty level of every diploma course in canada from 1 to 10 then i would rate computer programming at least 8 out of 10 trust me it's not easy it's not easy compared to a lot of courses that you can do and well if you are just coming here to get a work permit then your PR and you don't have any interest in studying don't choose this course there are way too many options that you can choose from and trust me this is not one of them so that should give you a clear idea of how difficult computer programming is and I think I've talked about everything that you need to know if you are about to choose computer programming as your course or if you have already chosen it and you are going to come here to pursue it uh, regardless I hope you got all the insights but there are some videos that I'm gonna make in which I'm gonna break down everything that you would need to know about computer programming in detail so for that do subscribe to the channel and if you like this one then please leave a like down below I'll see you in the next video bye bye